Hello everyone and welcome to the PMC orientation fall 2020 uh, edition here on live virtually. Uh, we're going to be getting started in a few minutes, uh, but before we do, I just want to go through a couple housekeeping things. By the way, my name is Amanda Blay. I am a PMC <coughs> coordinator uh, here at Carleton and I will be emceeing uh, today's events and tomorrow's events. So you're stuck with me for the next couple days. Um, just to give a, a, a heads up about the Q&A's. So you should be able to see in uh, the bottom of the screen or to your right an area that says show Q&A or hide Q&A. Um, that is where you can ask us some questions. Uh, if you are putting in a question and you don't want us to know who you are, be sure to click the box that says anonymous. That way, uh, if we do post your, your questions, your names aren't attached there. If you're okay with everyone seeing your name, by all means, uh, feel free to leave that box unchecked. Um, and if we do publish your question, it'll be seen during the question and answer period at the end of the presentation. To keep, uh, another reminder to keep the PMC Fall Orientation Live event uh, webpage available and open should you get disconnected from us. We do have staff uh, on standby in case anybody experiences any technical issues. You can also call the PMC front desk at 613-520-6608 if you run into any issues and need to call somebody. Uh, to follow along with the live captions, which we will be posting a new link for very shortly, uh, be sure to click on part one uh, caption viewer page in a separate window so you can follow along with the live captions. I believe I went through all the housekeeping things there. Um, our email address is <coughs> available as well if you prefer to email. That address is pmc at carlton, which is C A R. L E T O N dot C A. OK, so to start us off and give us a warm welcome, I'm going to introduce our director, uh, Larry McClowski. Uh, Larry's been with the center for, I believe, over 30 years now. Um, so Larry, I'm going to hand it over to you to say hi to everyone. Uh, Amanda, thank you for that uh, welcome and letting everyone know that I'm uh, uh, very old. Um, we are very proud uh, actually and uh, thrilled to have you today, both the students and parents. And uh, this is actually the Paul Menton Center's 30th anniversary. So uh, our center has really evolved over the years. We've seen a lot of, uh, and I've been privileged to be here for all 30 years of the beginning of the term. And it is a very exciting time. It's a huge transition for people to come to post-secondary education, university in particular. And there's also a fair bit of fear, right? And we get that. And that's why we have this orientation and why we really want to give you a lot of messages today. But most important from my point of view is the extent to which your success. And I think that we as an can act as an anchor to help you through the big transition. So keep in mind that your alliance with the Palmetto Center is really, really important. Our students going back some decades didn't do as well as the general population and they really weren't even close in terms of the most important thing, which is graduation. And over 20 years, our students with disabilities registered at the Paul Menton Center came up 20% and we actually beat the general population graduation rate now, which is amazing. And in fact, this is a cohort of students with some significant barriers and yet we able, were able to beat the general population. And there's two reasons for that that I can see in particular. One is students with disabilities tend to be very adaptive and very easy, can respond to changes that happen uh, more than other students. And they're used to making changes. And the other thing is students with disabilities who graduate here often attribute their alliance with their coordinator and with the support they get from student services as contributing to their success. So it is a very great partnership that we have going for these 30 years. So more than anything, uh, I think that you can really feel better about this transition. You can embrace it and feel the excitement and maybe less of the fear by having close and regular contact with your PMC coordinator in particular. And if there's a silver lining to this world that we're in with COVID, which is makes the fear factor likely a little bit uh, higher for you, 
but we have more staff than we ever have, and we are going to actively try to uh, make coordinators uh, reach out and to be more available to students than ever before. Getting your accommodations is very important, but we also want to remind you that the coordinators can do a lot more in terms of student development, learning strategy work, and all kinds of other things related to your education and to your, your general support as an individual are something that we can do. So let's uh, take advantage of this partnership. Your success actually has a lot to do with the, the extent to which uh, you, you maintain that adaptive approach to life and keep close contact with your PMC coordinator and all the people at the Paul Menton Centre who are really keen to uh, help you out. So we'll get through this COVID thing together. You'll have lots of support and uh, and then hopefully we'll also meet in the near future too. So uh, enjoy the day and we hope to have a close working relationship throughout this year and throughout your years uh, getting your degree at Carleton University. Thanks. Have a great year. Hi, Larry, thank you so much for that warm welcome. Uh, I usually do love seeing all our new students, fresh faces uh, on this week and this day. So um, it's great that Larry was able to still do that warm welcome even from afar, although he is in Ottawa, so I guess he's kind of close to us. Um, so before we get into the PMC 101 video, I'm just going to run through what today is going to look like. So during part one, uh, we've already done the uh, director's welcome, so we can check that one off the list. Uh, very shortly, we'll be watching a video uh, that explains all of the services um, at PMC, how our accommodations roll out, and other services available to you at Carleton as well. This video lasts any of about 30 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, so please be sure to be ready to sit there uh, for the 30 minutes to listen to that content. Following the video, we will have our coordinator live uh, available to answer questions. Uh, her name is Somi Tam. And so any questions you have throughout the presentation, if they get published, our other coordinator, Sonia, will be asking Somi those questions. So I will introduce Somi when it's time for the question and answer period. We'll take a quick break so that everyone can stretch or grab some water or have a quick washroom break. And then when we come back from our break, we'll be hearing from Nicole and Jenna. They are coordinators who run the ACT and ACT to Employ programs, and they will tell you about uh, the support that we have here at Carleton that showcases uh, career readiness and exploration. So Without further ado, we're going to debut our PMC 101 video. So please be sure, like I said, to uh, stay tuned for the next 30 minutes while we watch that. Welcome to PMC 101, an introduction for new students with disabilities to Paul Menton Center Services. In this video presentation, we will introduce you to the Paul Menton Center staff and explain how they are structured as a department. We will focus on the three core pillars of the PMC's mandate. These pillars include the provision of accommodation services and skill building opportunities, and the integration of students with disabilities into the larger Carleton community. Meet the staff of the Paul Menton Center. They are a dedicated and caring group of people who will be here to support you during your studies at Carleton. Since its inception in 1990, the Paul Menton Center has been on the forefront of creating innovative programs and services for a growing and increasingly diverse population of students with disabilities. Today, the staff at the PMC has the privilege of supporting over 3,600 students with disabilities in the pursuit of their university education. The PMC team is a multidisciplinary group of professionals with background in education, social work, and counseling. Structurally, the Paul Menton Center reports to the Office of the Vice President of Students and Enrollment. Under the leadership of Larry McCloskey, PMC employs 20-plus staff in various roles to carry out its mandate. Twelve PMC coordinators work directly with students and provide case management and support. Students are assigned to a PMC coordinator for the duration of their studies at Carleton, who becomes the go-to person if they encounter problems along the way. Maureen Jones is the departmental administrator who manages the front desk reception and assists with student services. Bruce Hamm is the manager of student services. 
He has a great team of specialists working behind the scenes to deliver efficient and seamless student services, such as the peer volunteer note-taking program, captioning, ASL interpretation, etc. In addition, Michael Cody has joined the team as online learning coordinator to assist with e-learning development projects. Jason Govius and Jordan Tremblay are our two resident experts on assistive technology and can address any questions you have about AT. The Paul Menton Center's mandate has three important core pillars. Our primary mandate is to provide individualized academic accommodations and support services to students with disabilities while maintaining academic standards. The purpose of the accommodations is to level the playing field while ensuring students with disabilities meet the same learning outcomes, essential requirements, and competencies as other students. Our second mandate is to provide student development opportunities for students to develop independence and resilience while they are in university. These skills development opportunities are available at PMC and in the larger Carleton community. Our third mandate is the integration of students with disabilities into the Carleton community. Like all other students, students with disabilities are members of the CU community with the same rights and responsibilities that community membership entails. Similarly, students with disabilities have access to all the services and facilities that are available to all other students on campus. PMC works with campus partners to ensure these services are accessible. The accommodation of students with disabilities is a shared responsibility at Carleton and follows an integrated model. The PMC works in partnership with professors and student service departments on campus to deliver integrated and seamless services to students with disabilities. Now let's take a look at the three core pillars of the PMC mandate. Accommodation Services In Carleton's Academic Accommodation Policy for Students with Disabilities, available on the PMC website, PMC is the designated department to coordinate delivery of accommodations in partnership with academic staff and campus partners. As a student with a disability, it is your responsibility to self-identify to PMC for accommodations, provide documentation, and participate in the accommodation process. It is also the student's responsibility to request accommodations and services early each term. PMC plays a central role in the evaluation of disability documentation and in the assessment of individualized academic accommodation requests while maintaining academic standards. The implementation of academic accommodations is a shared responsibility at Carleton. The policy specifies roles and responsibilities of PMC, students, and faculty in the accommodation process. The Letter of Accommodation, or LOA, is a formal document through which you request accommodation from your professors each term. There are four easy steps to accessing accommodation and support services at the Paul Menton Center. Number one, meet with your PMC coordinator for a 20-minute follow-up appointment to set up accommodations for your courses if you had already completed the intake process in the previous term. Number two, follow up with your professors TAs, or lab instructors to discuss the implementation of your accommodations. Number three, monitor your progress during the term. Advise your PMC coordinator of any issues or problems with your accommodations. Number four, check your Carlton email regularly for communication from PMC, your professors, and the McIntyre Exam Center, or MEC. Remember to always book your appointment through the PMC front desk via email at pmc at carlton.ca. Step 1. Follow up with your PMC coordinator after your first week of classes. Prepare for your meeting by reviewing your course outlines beforehand for information on how the course will be delivered online, whether synchronous, asynchronous, or blended, how you will be evaluated, when assignments are due, and what are the reading requirements. In your first class, evaluate whether your professors provide sufficient lecture materials and note-taking support on CU Learn for each course in order to assess whether you will need a note-taker for the course. 
Keep in mind that lectures are pre-recorded in asynchronous courses and could be pre-recorded in blended courses with some live component. At the meeting, you and your coordinator will review course outlines, discuss accommodations you will need for each course, and explore referrals to support services offered by PMC and the CU community. As well, you will review procedures and responsibilities. At the conclusion of the meeting, a letter of accommodation for each course will be emailed to your professor. This is what a letter of accommodation looks like. It specifies accommodations recommended for tests and exams and for classroom participation in a particular course. It is effective from the date when it is issued. Step 2. Follow up with your professor. After your letters of accommodation have been sent, you will send a follow-up email or schedule a virtual meeting with each of your professors or lab instructors to discuss how accommodations will be applied. For online courses, discuss how they are planning to apply the extra time for online tests and exams. When classes are scheduled on campus, the process will be a little different. If you have accommodations for tests and exams, you will be writing at the McIntyre Exam Center. In order for you to write your tests and exams at the MEC, your professors are required to submit a test booking at least two weeks before the test or exam. If you have supplemental notes as an accommodation, whether on campus or online, ask your professors to kindly post or make an announcement in CULEARN or in your on-campus classroom to ask for volunteer note takers. During your meeting with your professors, please note you are not required to disclose the nature of your disability. Step 3. Monitor both your learning and mental health. During the term, it is important to assess how well you are learning and whether your support and strategies are working. Ask yourself these questions. How are my accommodations and support services working for me? Are they more than I need? Do they need to be changed or modified? How good are my study skills and learning strategies? How do I ask my professors or TAs for help? Am I managing my time effectively? What other services are available at PMC and on campus to help me with my issues or needs? If any of these questions resonate with you and you do not know where to seek further support, please do not hesitate to reach out to your PMC coordinator by booking a phone appointment or send them an email. Also monitor your mental health. If you are feeling overwhelmed or stressed, not adjusting well to university, or feeling lonely and isolated, and don't know where to seek help, please reach out to your PMC coordinator. Step 4. Check your C-mail regularly. Carleton University uses C-mail as the main method of communication with students. Please check your C-mail regularly so you do not miss important communication from PMC, MEC, your professors, and other departments on campus. With regard to students' responsibilities, you are expected to actively participate and cooperate in the accommodation process. Accommodations are not automatically renewed from term to term. You are required to request accommodations from your PMC coordinator at the beginning of every term, either by booking a 20-minute in-person or phone appointment, or by submitting an online request through the My PMC portal. Be willing to try reasonable accommodations suggested by your PMC coordinator. Once your letters of accommodation have been emailed to your professors, Please follow up with each one of them to discuss how the extra time accommodation will be arranged for your online tests and exams. If you notice problems or issues with your accommodations, please contact your PMC coordinator immediately. Concerning professors' responsibilities, Carleton has a culture where professors are generally accommodating towards students with disabilities and take their shared responsibility in the accommodation process seriously. Your professors are responsible for the implementation of the accommodations specified in your letters of accommodation, informing TAs of your needs. They work with PMC to coordinate classroom accommodations, such as supplemental notes provided by peer volunteer note-takers, sign language interpreters, captioning, etc. 
When courses and exams are delivered online, professors have the option of applying the extra time accommodation themselves in CU Learn, or they can request support from the McIntyre Exam Center. When exams are on campus, professors work with McIntyre Exam Center to provide accommodations. The McIntyre Exam Center, or MEC, is part of Scheduling and Examination Services and coordinates accommodations for some online and all on-campus tests, midterms, and exams. PMC staff works closely with them to deliver these accommodations. There are two MEC locations, 133 UC and 124 Patterson. Each location can accommodate up to 40 students at any given time. This fall, all tests and exams will be delivered online. Your professors can request scheduling and accommodation assistance from MEC, who will send confirmation to students. But professors also have the option of applying the extra time accommodation themselves on CU Learn. So again, discuss with your professor how they intend to implement that accommodation. When classes are scheduled on campus again, the process will be different and MEC will play a central role in providing accommodations for tests and exams. For on-campus tests, they will create a seat for a student once they receive a test booking from the professor and confirm the arrangement with the student by email one week before the test. If you do not receive an email, you should contact your PMC coordinator to look into the situation. For on-campus final and deferred exams scheduled by the registrar's office, professors are not required to book MEC. There is a deadline for students to request accommodations for final exams if they have not already requested accommodations earlier in the term. The deadline will be different for each term. Consult the Carlton's academic deadlines on the Registrar's Office website. The process for organizing accommodations for final and deferred exams is a little different than for in-class tests. Students receive confirmation of their accommodation arrangements one week before the first day of the formal exam period by email and through their personalized My Exam schedule on Carlton Central or on their smartphone through the Carlton mobile app. MEC will deliver all the completed on-campus tests and exams to the departments, usually the following business day. Visit the Scheduling and Examination Services website for exam accommodations information. Students often have questions about how they are going to write their exams with accommodations on CU Learn. PMC staff has prepared answers to a list of frequently asked questions. Here are the answers to three commonly asked questions. How are online exams different from on-campus exams? You are responsible for the conditions in which you write your online tests and exams. You will not need most accommodations you usually have for exams written on campus. For example, quiet location, when and how to take breaks, comfortable furniture, etc. You will need accommodations for things that you do not have control over, such as the duration of tests and exams, and the date and time when they are scheduled. How will I receive my usual extra time for my timed online exams? The extra time will be applied to your online exams in CU Learn, either by your professors or by the McIntyre Exam Center. How should I prepare my physical environment at home to ensure an optimal exam writing experience? Ensure your physical environment is quiet, comfortable, and relatively distraction-free during your exams. Make prior arrangements with family members or roommates to give you the space and quietness you need during your exams. Consider wearing noise cancellation headphones or earplugs to reduce noise from your immediate surroundings. Check out our complete FAQs for online exams on the PMC website. Occasionally, a conflict can arise with the implementation of an accommodation. The academic accommodation policy has both informal and formal mechanisms for students and professors to appeal if there is an issue with a particular academic accommodation and or how it was provided. Often, problems or disagreements are usually resolved informally through the mediation efforts of the PMC coordinator through discussion with the professor and or chair of the department. 
If a problem or complaint is not resolved at the informal level, the case is escalated to the Senior Academic Accommodation Appeals Committee at either the request of the student or faculty member. Skills Development As students embarking on an exciting new chapter in your life, we invite you to embrace a growth mindset as you move through your studies. While getting good grades is important, it is also important to enjoy your university experience and to seek out opportunities for skills development. Skills development opportunities in learning, mental health and well-being, and employability are available through PMC and the wider CU community. This year, PMC is piloting a new program for new students called MORE, Metacognition, Outcomes, Resilience, and Education. Through enhanced supports, the goal of MORE is to improve academic and mental health outcomes by increasing student engagement and building skills and resilience. The official launch date of MORE is September 9th and ends in the winter semester, after which point we will assess its benefits to students. There are five core components of the program. Students will complete assessments designed to gauge their functional impairments, their practices and attitudes towards learning and studying, and their mental health and well-being. These assessments will be completed at intake as well as upon exiting the program. Informed by assessment results, the Student Development Plan provides a summary of the student's strengths, areas of need, and goals in different life domains, including school, work, health and well-being, and social and interpersonal relationships. All participating MORE students will be required to take modules on online learning strategies, LS, through CU Learn, on topics like time management, note-taking, studying for exams, and academic writing in university. Students work one-on-one -on -one with a learning strategist to develop specific learning strategies and skills, or with a counseling intern to address specific issues as identified in their student development plan. Students will receive regular check-ins from their PMC coordinators as part of the scaffolding support of MORE. These regular check-ins provide an opportunity for students to discuss what is working, what is not working, and whether further intervention or support is needed. This is an example of a student development plan. It includes strengths, areas of need, and goals. The plan is reviewed and updated with student input over the academic year. In addition to the learning strategies supports offered by PMC, there are other resources offered by the wider CU community to help you become a more effective learner. The Center for Student Academic Support, CSAS, is a great resource for online learning support services for all students. New this fall, online learning orientation workshops are available to teach you the nuts and bolts of online learning on CU Learn. This fall, the Peer Assisted Study Sessions, PASS, workshops and office hours will be held virtually on Zoom. These tutorial sessions on selected courses are run by PASS facilitators who had taken these courses with the same professors. They offer review of course materials in engaging and collaborative ways. CSAS offers online learning support workshops on a variety of topics related to study skills and learning strategies. You can self-enroll from their website. If you need advice on writing your papers, they offer one-on-one, -on -one 50-minute virtual writing consultations through Microsoft Teams. CSAS also offers virtual one-on-one -on -one learning support sessions with peer learning assistants. Check out their website for more information. In the wider CU community, the School of Mathematics and Statistics has a math tutorial center that provides tutorial help for first-year math courses. The Science Student Success Center is a good resource for science students. They have mentors, workshops, study groups, and other learning resources. The Faculty of Engineering recently created the Elsie McGill Learning Center to provide drop-in tutorial services for students taking first-year engineering courses. Lastly, 
Make effective use of your professors and TAs during their virtual office hours. A variety of resources are available on campus to help you manage your mental health and well-being. At PMC, we offer disability counseling and motivational coaching through interns from the Master in Education Counseling Program at University of Ottawa. Ask for a referral from your PMC coordinator. FIDA, from Intention to Action, helps students to better manage stress and improve their academic performance by navigating the personal stressors that can get in the way of school. Students in this program work one-on-one -on -one with a staff member for one hour every week for 12 consecutive weeks. Health and counseling services provide short-term counseling for students struggling with anxiety, depression, sexual violence, or personal and academic stress. Their mental health team consists of part-time psychiatrists, GP psychotherapists, and MA counselors. Their approach is strength-based and solution-focused therapy. They also have counselors who work specifically with international students, graduate students, those who have experienced sexual violence, and LGBTQS2 plus students. The Residence Counseling and Wellness Center is a satellite office of Health and Counseling Services. It is located in 131 Renfrew Building. They have three full-time counselors. Students living in residence can book an appointment with a counselor by calling 613-520-2600, extension 8061. EmpowerMe is funded by CUSA, the Carleton University Student Association and the university. Undergraduate students have access to free counseling services in the community through Empower Me by telephone, video counseling, or e-counseling. This free service is accessible 24-7, 365 days per year. Call toll-free 1-844-741-6389 to make an appointment. Carlton has created online tools and resources to help you understand, manage, and improve your mental health and well-being while at university. Visit carlton.ca forward slash wellness. Learning to use assistive technology effectively is important for fostering independence in university and beyond. At PMC, we provide one-on-one -on -one training on how to use assistive software. We also offer group workshops on how to take good notes using assistive technology. Jordan and Jason will meet with students to demo different AT software and devices. Jordan, who works as both a learning strategist and assistive technologist, will often incorporate AT in learning strategy and study skills development. PMC has been working with Career Services to develop employment supports specifically for students with disabilities. The outcome of this collaboration is ACT, Accessible Career Transition, which offers a designated consultant to work specifically with students with disabilities. With a background in disabilities, as well as in employment and career, this consultant, Nicole Borges, provides individualized support to help students with job search strategies, personal marketing through resume, LinkedIn, networking, interview and salary negotiation skills, and issues related to disclosure of disability and workplace accommodations. Act to Employ has a mandate to provide paid part-time experiential job opportunities for students with disabilities on campus. Jenna Lambert and Amanda Hodgson are both student advisors with Act to Employ. Carleton Community the Library Accessibility Services provides two very important services to students with disabilities. For students who have print disabilities, they provide the conversion of required course readings into accessible digital format. In order to access this service, a referral is required from your PMC coordinator. The new Sun Joy McLaren Adaptive Technology Center is a quiet space with 10 individual rooms each equipped with assistive technologies. This fall, it will be open Monday to Friday during regular business hours by appointment. Ask your PMC coordinator for a referral and more information. The library also provides research assistance through its research help desk and consultation with subject specialists. 
visit the McCodrum Library website for a list of library services. If you need academic advising during your first year or help with changing your major, the staff at the Academic Advising Center can help. Advising appointments are available remotely. Contact academicadvising at carlton.ca. Also, departmental advisors are available to provide academic advising to upper-year students in their programs. The Registrar's Office manages academic activities and records for all undergraduate and special students. They schedule formal exams and deferrals, handle academic appeals, and issue transcripts and certificates of enrollment. Student Affairs administers the Student Rights and Responsibilities policies. They deal with conduct issues and provide support for students at risk through coordinated case management with campus partners. The Awards and Financial Aid Office administers government financial assistance programs such as OSAP or the Work Study Program. PMC works closely with the Awards Office to administer the Bursary for Students with Disabilities and the Canada Student Grant for Services and Equipment for Persons with Permanent Disabilities. The Awards Office also administers internal awards such as entrance scholarships, departmental awards, and bursaries. The UPASS Office administers the UPASS on behalf of the University and handles requests for opt-in and opt-out of this transit pass. If you are a graduate student, you can obtain health, dental, and accident insurance coverage through the Graduate Students' Union. They also run the famous Mike's Place pub on campus. CUSA, the Carleton Undergraduate Students Association, offers a wide range of services to undergraduate students. If you are taking a minimum of four courses in the fall term, you are automatically enrolled in its health and dental plan. If you are taking less than four courses in the fall term, you can self-enroll during the change of coverage period, which is between September 9th and 30th, 2020, for full year coverage. CUSA provides direct services to undergraduate students through its nine service centers, as well as a host of clubs and societies. They also offer access to counseling, through Empower Me. For more information about CUSA's services, visit their website at cusaonline.ca. Thank you for listening. Here are a couple final thoughts to wrap up. Meeting deadlines is an important skill in university. Be mindful of deadlines in each academic term. Check out the Registrar's Office website for 2020-2021 dates and deadlines. Request accommodations early each term. Keep track of your deadlines for assignments in the term. There are only 12 weeks of classes in the term. If you need help, ask your PMC coordinator for a referral to a learning strategist to help with time management. We are here to support you. Please stay connected with your PMC coordinator and other staff at PMC. Have a great year. Welcome back everyone. 30 minutes have passed and we have a new wealth of information. So um, just so you're all aware, um, in the beginning of the video, they talked a little bit about how we have over 3,600 students registered with our center. So um, even though you'll be working remotely, don't forget you aren't alone. There are lots of students who access our services and there's lots of supports available to you as you saw closer to the end of that video uh, available for students on campus. Um, we actually had over 144 students registered for this orientation. So again, there's lots of you out there watching. And so please uh, take a moment to post any questions you have about uh, the information that was in that video and we will be sure to get to those uh, answers during our next question and answer period. Um, just a quick um, piece of information before we move to talking with um, Somi and Sonia that um, 
everything today is being recorded and will be made uh, available to you live uh, afterwards and you will be emailed the link in order to access the recording so if you missed part of what happened in the last half hour or you're kind of like i don't know what's going on you will be able to review the content as well um, that video is also available on youtube because we're cool like that here at pmc so um, i do want to introduce Somi Tam. Somi Tam is our senior disability coordinator. Uh, she has been around um, not quite as long as Larry, but almost as long. And uh, you will be hearing uh, Sonia Tongay's voice in the back, who will be asking questions um, that have been published uh, on our Q&A live event page. So I am going to pull it over to Somi if she's ready to go. If not, then we might watch Sonia. Oh, there she is. There's Somi. <laughs> Somi, you're muted. So there we go. Hi, Somi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome. So Somi, I'm going to give the video. <laughs> Somi, I'm going to give the floor over to you. And Sonia, you're going to be asking some questions in the background. Great. Um, so we have our first question from our students and, and there's a student who's asking, can we can uh, we get extensions on assignments? Yes, it's on a case by case basis. So I think it's very important to, as mentioned early in the slide, it's important to learn to meet deadlines. And at the Paul Menzen Center, we have a lot of support to help you to meet your deadlines. However, we do understand that due to extenuating circumstances, you may not be able to meet a particular deadline. So in those cases, what you need to do is probably reach out to your coordinator to discuss your situation. And then to, so basically what I usually tell my students is they would have a, a discussion with me first and I would advise them to contact their professor to request the extension and then copy me on the email so that it's provided on a case by case assignments by assignment basis. There's a lot of support at the Paul Menton Center to help you to meet your deadlines. Great. Um, a student is asking about the Empower Me service and there was mention of it in the presentation that it's only for under, undergrad students. Is there an equivalent for graduate students? Yes, there are not an equivalent in the online f format. Um, but I think, you know, basically uh, we have a health and counseling services on campus and there is a designated counselor in at health and counseling who works specifically with graduate students. So I think not the same equivalent as in Empower Me uh, through CUSA, but I guess this is some think that you should address to GSA, um, the and Graduate Students I, Association. And I think I will add that um, some of our uh, counseling interns that are in-house at the Paul Mitten Center can also meet with grad students. Uh, they are graduate students, so often um, they can relate uh, with regards to their experience. Uh, you only have to speak to your coordinator um, in order to request a referral. Yes, we have a variety of counseling support. So I guess when you have that discussion, then we'll probably discuss what would be the best way for you to have your needs met. Oh, one question um, is good to talk. Another resource that's available for undergraduate students. Yes, it is good to talk. It's a good online uh, 24 hours. I think seven days a week uh, that's available for all students, including graduate students. Can somebody provide more information about that? Maybe online. Post the link. Next question. How early can a student request accommodations for the winter term or the second term? I think we normally recommend that they request accommodation, you know, the week off because really, you know, be I guess as soon as you know how you're going to be evaluated in the course. If you have access to the course outline in December, then of course you can request your accommodation uh, then. But most of the time, 
the course outline will not be posted on CU Learn until at least the beginning of the winter term. So I think it's not too late to request the accommodation in the first week when classes begin in the winter term. Uh, by then you will have review all your course outline on CU Learn and then you can make an informed decision about what you need for each course. Great. I'm uh, moving on down the list. Um, so are all lectures, even the live ones, recorded so you can go back and watch them later? No, not all of them are recorded. So there's three types of courses that are being offered at Carleton. So there one type one is called asynchronous. So these are courses that are all pre-recorded and all the uh, lecture materials are made available to students on CU Learn and therefore you to interact. So these are called asynchronous courses. So the second type is called synchronous. So these are courses where you are that are scheduled live during the, the time, during the regular time that you were supposed to, you know, during the same as a Sorry, <laughs> so according to your schedule. So basically these are live according. So meet you, you meet online at the same time uh, every week. So I think the option to record the lecture for a synchronous lecture is really based on the professor. So this is probably a discussion with you. You need to ask your professor, right? And the third type are blended courses. So these are courses that were there are some pre-recorded uh, asynchronous component and also live component that are live. So for example, in first year courses, you may see like the lecture part are being recorded, pre-recorded and made available on so you Learn, but the discussion may be live with your peers. So um, I think you, if it's not already indicated when you register on Carlton Central, you will find out this information in the first week of classes in terms of how your courses will be delivered. And I, some students are telling me that they're receiving emails from the professor about how the courses will be delivered. So um, check your email and check to see, see you learn. So by the first week of classes, you will know how your classes will be delivered. Great. Next question. Will note takers or volunteer note takers um, choose to volunteer for online courses this semester? Yes, so basically we haven't had any problem finding volunteer note taker over the summer. So basically all the classes during the summer were held online and we didn't have any problem finding online volunteers note taker. So basically the online the volunteer note taker, this is how it works. So the professor would make an announcement in class or post a notice on CU Learn. Interested volunteer would uh, contact us to register. And once we find the note taker, we'll send you an email to let you know that we found a volunteer note takers. So since we gone online, we found that there has been a change in the number of volunteers who are coming forward to volunteer to take notes. So we have a question, whether it's from a parent or a student, uh, can parents call or email the PMC coordinator? Yes, yeah, so but, but I think in order to do that, I think it's important for you to sign a consent to release to allow us permission to communicate with your parents. So I think if you want your parents to be involved, you need to sign a consent to release authorizing your coordinator or PMC staff to, I uh, guess, communicate with your parents about your accommodation needs at the Palmenton Center. A question about exam accommodations. So what happens if the extra time that a student is receiving for a particular test contradicts with another class time? Um, what do you mean by that? Could you clarify? Sonia? So so actually if there's a conflict, so if a student is receiving extra time to write a test yes. and it overlaps with a class that a lecture that may be um, uh, 
that goes on um, in somebody's schedule. So there's a, there's an overlap between the extra time for the test oh, and see. the class and the lecture that's being um, uh, presented. Very good question. So, mm -hmm. so basically what you need to do is reach out to your professor uh, to maybe start the test earlier so that you're able to, you know, have complete the test with the extra time and also attend your next class. So in these type of cases, always email your professor. In an online environment, it's a little more easy to facilitate because all they need to do is adjust your user override. So basically adjust your start time and, you know, so to allow you to, as mentioned, complete your test with extra time and for allows you to attend the next class. So in an online environment, it's a little easier to facilitate. So always contact your professor when this happened. Uh, when we go back to campus, um, I guess what you need the same thing. Email your professor to let them know. So if you need to start earlier, they need to contact the McIntyre Exam Center to let them know that you're going to start your test earlier than the, reg the regular start time. So moving on, I have a student who's asking, will all my teachers know that I have accommodations? So I think at the Paul Menthon Center, you have, basically that's why we ask that you request accommodation. So we believe that, well, I believe that students should have agency in choosing that they sh want accommodation for all their courses or only for some of their courses. So basically, when you request accommodation from your coordinator, we will send out the letters of accommodation to your professor. So only to your professor, but not to your TAs. So you you will copy on all these communication to your professor. So if you wish to share your letter of accommodation with your TA, that's up to you. And sometimes we also ask the professor if you require accommodation in your tutorial or lab, then you know that they share with the TA or the lab instructor. Sorry guys, I just wanted to interject. We have one more minute before we have to move on to our next presenter. Oh my goodness, um, that's so, like frickly. <laughs> so Sonia, I'm just gonna ask that you pick one last question for Somi to answer, um, and then we will answer all the other published questions that weren't uh, addressed in the uh, published chat. So um, for any of those outstanding questions, feel free to look there. Uh, we also will be having, um, Sonia, Somi, and other coordinators available to you later on, whether it's via email or phone. Go ahead, Somi. Right, and the last question, um, a student is asking, can I turn my camera off during a class or tutorial? Yes, so I so I would say always check with your professor, but I think, you know, I think the only exception may be if you're taking a sign language class where I guess if the professor need to see you. But I think if yeah, you can't uh, I think turn your camera off, but I would suggest that you always check with your TA and professor first. I, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I so if it is an issue, this is something you can discuss with your coordinator. Awesome. Anything else before we say goodbye to Somi and Sonia for today? You guys have any last words you want to share with students? Well, have a great year and we're here to help. So basically, I just want to acknowledge Michael Cody, who did an excellent job doing that video. So I prepared this really long presentation with a lot of content and somehow he managed to make it very engaging. And uh, so I just want to acknowledge his work in this. And I wish you all a great year and please feel free to reach out to me or to any of the PMC staff. Uh, have a great year. All the best. Thanks so much, Somi. Um, it's always great to hear from uh, our, our staff members who have a lot of experience and knowledge about how everything works here at PMC. Thanks everyone.